Hi, my name is Dennis Derrickson. I'm a professor at California Polytechnic State University in San Luis, San Luis Obispo, and I'm a professor in the electrical engineering department here. Prior to being at Cal Poly, I was with Hewlett Packard in Santa Rosa, California, working in their test and measurement divisions. Eventually those divisions uh, changed their name and now they're Keysight Technologies. So I've been here for 15 years at Cal Poly. I was chair from 2010 to 2020. My research areas are in high frequency, high frequency electronics and photonics and I'm standing inside our photonics slash electronics uh, lab that I have here at Cal Poly. So I really appreciate the fact that Keysight was able to send these bench essential instruments to us for us to evaluate. And I'll get to that in a, little, in a, in a second. But I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, some of the happenings that happened in education over the last year and a half in this COVID era of online instruction. So in March of last year, we had this very quick transformation from being standard face-to-face -face delivery for lectures and labs. And over a week's time frame, we were going all online all the time for digital analog or labs for lectures, everything. But we did have some lecture classes. So over that one week interval, we had to really scramble here at Cal Poly. So on the, the, uh, the, the instructions we had in person, <clears throat> we had to reconfigure all of our rooms so that the benches were all spaced at least six feet apart. And we had a cleaning protocol and we had our masking protocols so that people couldn't get too close to each other. And so that was a very quick having to take all of our equipment and rearrange it. Uh, we had one person per bench, which, out, which turns out to be a really great educational uh, way to go. And I'll talk more about that later. <clears throat> On the online side, we had to get all of our <clears throat> document cameras, our tablets for, for drawing on the screen, <clears throat> our Zoom skills going together. And we all became <clears throat> quote, quote, experts over a year of, of time putting together all of our online lectures and labs. Lectures, I think, were more straightforward. Labs, of course, are more difficult because we want our, our students to have a great hands-on experience with our electronic test and measurement equipment, and, and they didn't have that. But we tried to do the best we could by having them buy their own digital multimeters for their home laboratories. We have them buy electronic component kits, uh, small microprocessor kits, and try to get an okay home laboratory. We, the department bought a bunch of inexpensive uh, test and measurement equipment and sent them out on loaner to our, our students. And we got by, <clears throat> not, not quite as nice as some of the instrumentation such as this we have in our, our offices at Cal Poly. But in addition to that, we really took advantage of some of the Keysight uh, CAD design tools that they offered to uh, universities. So ADS, Advanced Design System, became one of our main circuit analysis tools, especially for high frequency electronics. We use EM Pro for electromagnetic simulation, and we use System View for our communication laboratory ac activities. So thank you so, so much Keysight for, for providing that. <clears throat> so um, let's talk about these uh, basic test and measurement bench essential tools that Keysight is just offering now for the first time. And I recall, Maybe 12 years ago, we bought a bunch of Keysight oscilloscopes, typically 2,000, 3,000 series, and I would pay uh, maybe $3,000 for those great scopes, and they're still great scopes today. <clears throat> but if we want to go to the strategy of having everybody having their own test bench, which would be a nice strategy we would like to pursue, we're going to need to buy a lot more stations. And at $3,000 just for an oscilloscope, multiply that by 100 stations, that gets a little bit expensive. So these bench essentials uh, really fit a good. Uh, Entry level uh, spot in the uh, in the test and measurement equipment world. They provide right, right amount of performance, and, and the cost is uh, less. For, you know, all all these instruments here are less than the cost I paid for my scope 10, 12 years ago. <clears throat> so let's see what we have here. We have a, a digital multimeter here with five and a half digits. We have a, a, a two channel uh, oscilloscope that happens to be a 50 megahertz bandwidth one. We have a three output power supply, and then we have a two output waveform generator. <clears throat> so one of the first things I noticed in, in using these are the, the large displays. Having large displays on the instruments, so easy to see, even if you're four or five feet away. 
They're all programmable, of course, by LAN and by USB. <clears throat> and also, the one of the things I really like about these features are they're very lightweight, uh, portable, easy to move around. And then um, they have some great software features too that I found especially helpful. The one, the one that I really like is the uh, Bodhi plot function. And here I have a another uh, oscilloscope. This happens to be a, a 1202G, which is a, a higher bandwidth oscilloscope that can go up to 200 megahertz. Uh, I, I typically, when we buy our scopes, we're probably going to buy 100 and 200 megahertz scopes because we want to be able to measure the clock speeds of some of our microprocessors. And <clears throat> 50 megahertz is okay, but I think we want to have just a little more bandwidth. So we'll probably be more interested in a model like this. <clears throat> and uh, this has a Bode plot function where we have a wave gen built into the instrument. And here I have a filter under test right here with two probes on the filter under test on the right here. It's this little item right here. And then I can choose the start and stop frequencies and it will do a log frequency sweep and measure both the magnitude and phase. And it'll show you the, the uh, input and output magnitude and phase in real time as it does the sweep. And so we didn't really have a good solution for that before. We had scopes, we had function generators, but we didn't have the, the software automation to make it really convenient for download. <clears throat> so I really love that feature in the oscilloscopes here. And I love the fact that this is upgradable to 200 megahertz at a very modest uh, cost offerings. <clears throat> uh, the, uh, in terms of other things I found, uh, in terms of uh, things I'd like to maybe improve is that if we have uh, two of these on top of each other, they're kind of balancing a little bit delicately right here, they're kind of very narrow. Uh, frame, which makes them easy to carry, but you have to watch out when you have double uh, stacking like that. I'll probably have to come up with my own solution to make sure that they don't fall down when people are using them hard. But I like the comp compact uh, setting of having two instruments on top of two instruments like that. <clears throat> I'm still exploring to see if the uh, we have external time base here so we could cascade several of these and have all the outputs of the wave generators in phase. I, I'll need to find out that shortly. Uh, what other things did I find? Um, generally, very easy to use. I uh, love the fact that they're programmable, big displays. Um, so what more can I ask for some really great uh, entry-level test and measurement equipment? Uh, I would also like to just mention, uh, again, thank you for Keysight for uh, providing these prototypes right here. I think one of the things that really will affect us at Cal Poly is that uh, in the uh, spring when we had these online class, the in-person classes, we had everybody with one bench per person. Uh, that was just so great. Uh, I had my, my first, uh, first quarter students to do the education like that. And so they had, everybody had their own equipment and everybody had a bunch of uh, partners too, because right next to them, six feet away, people would be doing their work and they would be going back and forth with, of course, with the, the uh, protocols for not having transmission of the COVID virus. Uh, but I think we're going to expand to have a lot more stations going forward just because of our experience in online or in-person education in the COVID era. So just have a lot more stations and everybody having their own station and the cost is probably one of the things that allow us to do that. And they can still have their partnership experience, but they can have their full hands-on experience at the same time. Sometimes when you have two people at a bench, one's the, the doer, one's kind of like the data taker, and they, they get half experiences. We want everybody to have a full experience. <clears throat> Another thing about the, uh, the COVID era I want to mention before I, uh, I go off here is that <clears throat> the Zoom lectures, they were really interesting. Uh, I think parts of that I felt were actually almost effective as, as in-person. And what I found out in some of my smaller classes that maybe have 15 or 20 people, uh, the senior level electives or graduate classes, <clears throat> So we're all sitting around in Zoom. I see all their windows. I know their names right away. Their, na their names are printed right on their box. And <clears throat> I would put something on the display and I would be able to annotate it. And if they have a question, they can take their pen and they can annotate on top of my annotations. And it's like, we're all sitting there with our pens talking about the same thing. Uh, when there's clarifications, they don't have to come up to the board. They can just do it right there. Very good visibility to everything we're working on. And I found that sometimes people are actually more, uh, more apt to speak up in, in the Zoom lecture environment. So I really enjoyed that, uh, <clears throat> that aspect of, of the lecture. The other thing is that when we have typical in-person lectures, they're an hour long. And when your hour is up, there's a whole crowd of people waiting outside that room and they're gonna rush in and the other one's gonna rush out because 
it's the changing of the student guard. But in the case of if students don't have classes afterwards, if I don't have classes afterwards, I can dismiss the class. But the people who want to stay and learn more, they can stay on for the next 15, 20 minutes and discuss anything that we discussed during the lecture. So that's really great to do that reinforcement right afterwards. <clears throat> the other thing I found out was that uh, Zoom in terms of office hours is great in that people previously, if they wanted to talk to me, they would have to, if they're in the dorms, they have to get walked from the dorms to the department, make sure I'm there, wait in line perhaps, talk to me for five minutes or 10 minutes. And then in the end you have uh, what should be a five or 10 minute detailed interaction turns into a 45 minute to an hour endeavor. And that's gonna really be a, a obstacle for people doing that. With Zoom though, I can just be there working on, on things in my office and then I'll, I'll hear somebody come up with Zoom and we can talk about it, use our whiteboard to, to illustrate some diagram and then we'll be off. And uh, it's really efficient use of time and people can really enjoy that. So I'm not saying that the, the, the Zoom era was like the panacea, but it certainly has changed the way we're gonna do some of our education. And I, I enjoy parts of it, but I, I think the part I didn't enjoy was just being, uh, too tied to the screen all day long when I have many Zoom meetings after, after each other. But I think in going forward, well, this certainly will uh, affect how we do education for the long term. So anyway, my summary is that uh, these Keysight Bench Essentials are great instruments. We'll probably be purchasing some of them here at Cal Poly. I love the, uh, the Bodhi plot analyzers, the big screens. The cost is a very important aspect too, and it's very compact. Um, I think this is going to be a, a nice set of equipment to hear to have at Cal Poly. Thanks again, Keysight, and that's it for today.